Please. Next crossover tournament starts. We have Lakeshore on my left, Florida on my right. Florida will start with the ball. I'd like to remind all the spectators to please remain quiet while the game's in progress. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off now. Thank you. Quiet, please. Center. Goalball doesn't compare to other sports. It's a game of power. You've got to decide that I want to get hit by this ball to block it. Goalball is a sport for blind and visually impaired and there are three players on each side of a court and they're all blindfolded. There's a ball that's about as big as a basketball, weighs about three pounds and has bells in it. You roll the ball down the court sort of bowling style and you try to score goals but as a defender, you have to lay on your side and let the ball hit you to block it. When I first started out, putting those eye shades on, it is actually pitch dark, like you cannot see out of that thing. So it's a little scary at first, especially when like a huge ball is coming at you. Momentum is very important. You need to expand the muscle as much as you can and then contract to get the ball moving as fast as possible. The most painful place to get hit is probably be the chest. Genitals. <laughs> the face. Broken noses happen. I think I've gotten a bloody nose once. When I step on this court, it's kind of like a new world where I only have to rely on my ears instead of my eyes. I orient myself by using my teammates and feeling around me. We can communicate by either tapping the ground or calling each other's names. When you walk in and it's just so quiet, but all you can hear is just like a bell rolling and two people talk and say, play, and then you score. And then all you hear is Wah! all the crowd screaming. That's what really gets me. It's peaceful though, when it's quiet. Cause like a lot of people take naps. I've done them before. I feel like nothing would be the same if Lakeshore didn't exist. I found goalball when I was either six or seven. There's a sports camp at Lakeshore called Sports Education Camp. That camp is all about adapting sports and showing you sports that are for people with visual impairments or who are blind. And then when I got to about nine, I started playing competitively. I've been on the Lakeshore team since its creation eight years ago. I remember getting beaten every game and I was the bench warmer. We definitely have progressed greatly. It's just taken us a while. This team, I think, was special. They were self-motivated. At the beginning of the season, I asked them the goals that they had for the season, and each one of them wanted uh, a national championship. Nationals takes place in St. Augustine, Florida at the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. It's a good experience overall. Lakeshore has had a reputation of being a good, strong team. They start to experience this pressure of keeping the streak going, but it's more important for them to see how hard that they can work. I hope there's gonna be a Lakeshore team next year. Me and Nick, we were seniors this year, so next year we won't be eligible to play. But being close, Outside of goalball means that you're going to be even closer inside of goalball. We have good communication and that's essential to being able to play well together. We have to make sure we can trust each other all the time to be where we are in the position we need to be. If one person doesn't work well, it's easy to get scored on or to lose the game. It's just so cool, honestly, because we just come, like, we just all combine into one family. Cliff. A good man. Josh, a funny person. Parker, takes you under your wing. Nick, a gentle giant. He's like a teddy bear sometimes. Then he can just turn on you. And then myself, just trying to be funny. Please give that camera out of my face. 
This is the morning before we head out to Nationals. As you can tell, it's still dark outside. All right, buddy. All right. You're good. Yeah. All right, and yeah, we're gonna bring back the gold medal for you. Mwah. When you're at a tournament, it's sort of like time stops. I have more friends in goalball than I do outside of goalball. You know, that's another great part about being at a tournament is just seeing everybody again. I just like playing it. It's super fun. It's kind of the only sport that I can really play. And the ability to just have a team and then like bond with them. You get a lot of adrenaline from you know getting ready to play. If I get really stressed, all I'm, instead of just going and screaming in a towel, I could just get my anger out on the court. Go balls love. Go balls life. We're here a little early to kind of, you know, check everybody out and see what everybody's doing. You got to know what you're up against. I'm not really worried too much about team's offense. I think I, I look at their defense and try to see where where the holes are, where we can score goals. What we're going to do for the lineup, we're going to have Parker go center. Okay. Um, Josh, I want you left. And Nick, you're going to be right. Tanner will look to get you in. There's no need to hit a specific target over and over, but just keep keep them guessing. You guys are good, you're ready. Let's do it. Lineup will be throwing first. Quiet please. Stand. We're not looking at the end result, but we're looking at how we got there. And we critique ourselves, our performance, but not the other team and how they play us.
<laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. I still can't go a tournament without getting hit in the face. If I don't, if I don't leave a tournament with having some sort of scar on like my, like sort of some sort of like burn on my jawline or like on my cheek, I didn't play hard enough. All right, boys. We uh, we just got the number one seat. We did it. Actually, we haven't done it. But we're we got number one. We got number one seat. We did it. Only we're not I mean, going to bronze. We're going all the way to gold. <laughs> Taking back all the White House. We're gonna take back the bar. <laughs> this is going to be a mental game. It's not going to be high scoring. Both teams are defensive powerhouses. You've got to mentally outlast your opponent while we're playing them, okay? Talk to each other, keep each other in it, keep each other focused. We're ready for this, guys. Next boys game is to determine the gold medal, first place for the Youth National Go Bowl, USABA Go Bowl Tournament. On my left I have Lakeshore, on my right I have Texas. Parker and Nick, I need defense. Josh, take over the game. It's time. When you're losing, people's spirits are gonna drop a little bit and my job is to lift them back up. That mental strength in the game is something that I feel has gotten me to actually win games. You have to be able to lose to be able to win. Focus, focus, defense, Nick, defense. Be strong on defense. Quiet, please. Play. Great season, guys. I'm proud of the way you all played. Coming back from a deficit like that, turning it around, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's a huge accomplishment Especially right there. Especially with two and a half minutes left. That, yeah, no, that was a awesome. good team that we just faced right there. Uh, Josh, Nick, it's been a pleasure. We're going to miss you all. Really, really, really proud of the way you all played, um, the way you've developed into young men. In Go Ball, you need at least three players to have a team. Josh and Nick, they graduated, so they've aged out of the program. We're trying to find a third player for next year. It would be good if we could keep Josh, but. Can you see yourself being like a, um, like a Josh of the team in a couple years? No, because he's just so talented and so good at this sport. I don't think I don't think anybody could compare to him because he's car he carries himself with class and dignity. Parker is the only one on the on the team now with real experience. 
I feel like if they do get a third, it's going to be another grind for them. There's, there's going to have to be some losses to uh, actually get back to the top. I am happy to see them go on to greater things, pursuing college, going to a Paralympic team. Working at Lakeshore and coaching these kids, the thing that I've learned is that these are normal kids. They may have a disability, but they're normal. Society tells us that people with disabilities can't do much, but it's just, it's not true. You can have a disability, but not be disabled if society provides the right resources. I have ocular cutaneous albinism. What I would see at 20 feet, somebody with perfect vision would see at 300 feet. I have a detached retina in my right eye, so I can't see out of that period. If that were to happen to my left eye, then I'd be completely blind. When I see 20, 100, the farther things are away, the more blurry they get. I have Stargardt, so if my eyes are very fatigued, that makes me see black dots every now and then. I don't let that stop me from doing anything. No one's perfect. Everyone has something going on with them, but that what makes us normal. Next year, I plan to go to college and get ready to start the rest of my life. My goal is to get accepted by the Mercedes-Benz program at Shelton State to go work for them because Mercedes has a good working environment and a good high paying job. I would just like to be like a doctor that can find a cure for eye disease or be a graphic designer. Maybe even like if Cliff like resigns as a coach later on, like become a go walk coach. I do want to be an astrophysicist, but there are times when I'm just like, uh, maybe I'll do something with art. That's the beginning of one of my favorite pieces, but I don't know the rest of it. I'm hoping as I learn and I experience more things that I'll figure out exactly what I want to do. I want to specialize in sports psychology and, and um, also want to study sports science and kinesiology and just how the body moves. But right now, I have plans to play until my body won't let me. I have Paralympic aspirations. I want to be a Paralympic gold medalist in gold ball and I am aiming to make it on the men's team for the 2020 Paralympics in Tokyo.